That is solid. That is absolutely solid. Oh, Jesus Christ. And you can see our uh, axle is poking out the on end. So now we're at this point. Now you don't want to drop the wheel just yet. The problem is, is that the wheel's quite heavy and your connection to your brake, which is here, and the stabilisation bar underneath to stop the drum from rotating, um, they're going to take the weight and they're on one side. So what you want to do is you want to um, detach them first. So what I do, I like to leave this linkage here intact and just undo it at this point and to do that we're going to need a 12mm yeah a 12mm but we'll probably need a socket so you want to hit the split should want to come off. And then we get a pry bar or another screwdriver. And lever this well lever this lever off. Give it a rock. It's actually linkage off. You don't need to adjust. You don't need to undo any of that. It will need adjusting, but we can just attach this back on and adjust it when we get to that point. Instead of winding the whole thing off and uh, winding the whole thing back on. So our next bit is this little pin, split pin. There's my pliers. Pliers out, pull that pin out, job's a good one, put that in there, and then we need to get that nut off. So this is an M14, or 14mm nuts, I shouldn't say M14 because that's the thread. So what I like to do, what I always like to do, is if something's rusty or on tight, just to use a spanner wherever possible to crack the nut. So, as you can see we spun this round taking this nut off. So now the disc brake, you can tell the disc's locked because you can't spin that round there now, which you should be able to do. And there's a lot of corrosion and crap. So now we have to drive the axle out. So I know this is an awkward angle. What you want to do is you want to put the wheel on your foot or something that's the right height twist and pull. Bingo. It all falls apart. And this falling apart is why you want to take your brake linkage off and everything off first. Because otherwise this had all been resting against that now. You could bend this rod, which is what you don't want to be doing. So there's the axle. You can see that any grease that was in it has kind of diminished and disappeared. Now, the chain can come off. I'll bring it around to this side so you can see. So we're going to do a drum brake, you know, drum brake replacement. One of the first things you want to do is get a bit of cardboard, sit your wheel on that, so when you start spinning it around, etc., you're not scratching the other side of the hub. So it says here usable range, and we've got these range indicators, which is nicely chrome plated. Probably one of the only things on the bike. So what we need to do is we need to pop this cover off. Now. 
the brake is attached to this side, this face of the drum, and then the inside of the drum, which it presses against, is actually part of the wheel. Now you can tell this is seized because she doesn't want to move it. So, rubber the mallet time. to rotate slightly she is really seized all right then before I stated that you can leave um, the uh, brake push rod on the bike etc um, but that is only if your brake isn't seizing it isn't seized and this one is so what we do in this case we have to take it off which I've already done because I don't want to bore the shit out of you line the nut on what I want to do is we're going to try and unfreeze the brake like that. As you can see, all you've done is you just turned this lever which actuates the drum and voila. So there's a lot of meat on this drum. It's not like it's worn out. It's just the springs have probably given up the ghost and uh, either it's this shaft which does feel a bit solid. Something just dropped out. Oh yeah, that's the uh, main linkage there for this um, pivot link. So, there's your drum. Here's the inside of the drum, yeah, which is rusty. It's fucking bearing. Bearing feels perfectly fine, good. That means we don't have to replace that. And uh, so what we need is we need some sandpaper just to eke out all this brake dust and crap and rust and uh, what I've got is a Lucas um, rear drum exactly the same 160mm replacement and uh, be careful with some of these because there's a number just in case you want to know I don't think you will be careful because some of these brakes don't come with springs especially some of the Chinese knockoff ones so if you've got a uh, seized drum like this um, you'll want to replace the springs as well because it's either the pads have seized to the outer drum, which it does look like in this case, or the sp one of the springs could have let go, etc. So uh, if you're going to replace one, replace the whole lot. One of the things we need to do, we need to unfreeze this, which means giving him a hammer, like so, come on you sod, come on, like so. back on. See how it's movement. We can get out of it. Now you always put the nut the bolt back in to stop it jumping teeth. seized. Oh god, look at the state of that. Yeah. See, now this should move freely. And this is probably our problem. Turn at least. Oh, 
I've got the spring resistance that we're now flicking back. Oh, you see, that is solid. That is absolutely solid. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right then. Um, so yeah, I've picked out the dust seal. It's like a fibery washer piece of shit. And uh, still can't get the shaft out, so I'm going to have to give it a bit of a clap. Before I do that, I need a coffee and a fag. My God, this shaft does not want to go anywhere. So in this case, if you're stuck, you can always take it down to a machine shop or something. And uh, get them to press it out. We're going to give it one go with the heat. So we need to get this pretty hot. Quite a lot of metal here, so really quite a lot of heat. See, that took one good strike, just as hard as I've hit it before, and she's popped. So we'll uh, whack it a couple more times and get the sucker. It must be around I don't know, 100 degrees, something like that, still. But we've got it out, which is all that matters. Ta da! So as you can see, there's a lot of build up and crap. You can see how dry it is now that we heat it up. And uh, oh, oh. still very hot. A bit of grease in here. Get rid of the rest of that horrible shitty seal. That fibre seal, just with a screwdriver. Flame kind of uh, pulverise the rest of it. So there you are, there's a clean part. Um, it's not immaculate clean, and all I did was, in the backyard fashion, is I um, got some Persil, some washing up powder for your clothes, etc., non bio, and uh, stuck it in some hot water in a bowl and just brushed it down with a brush, etc., nothing major. We've got the main majority of the crap off. Um, you just got to make sure this is completely dry and make sure you rinse it really well because you'll feel that Persil or any kind of washing detergent leaves a residue on your fingers and that will leave a residue on here. So you've got to make sure that you rinse it thoroughly. And uh, But you can do an alright job. You know, that's not bad um, for what we're doing right now. Right, so what we want to do is we want to test fit it. That's not very good. Still wanting to seize but these are pretty much dry. So, what I'm using is some copper grease. Not much. And I mean, not much. A tiny bit, really. And, uh, some copper grease, grease in there, like so, Let's see if we can get it to, god that's tight, straight away it's just gone tight, good thing for adjustables, see that is, oh no, there we go, there seems to be some kind of hard spot, once we got it in there, that's lovely, that is literally lovely. Seems to be some really dry spot. But that, I'm happy with that, that's literally. So we'll get out our brake pads, make sure your hands are clean, try not to touch the outer surface. So literally grab him like so. Keep them away from your, your copper grease. So what these have is, if you notice, they're identical. 
pattern. They have a block on one end which goes against the flats here and then they have a round section that goes on this stub here. So, you've got to remember this whole assembly doesn't move. So we can put a bit of grease around here, just a bit around this pin. Literally a tiny sliver, nothing crazy. And a tiny bit in here, just to help it along. Tiny bit in there. And I also like to put a bit on this pad. So you're wiping off the excess and you get a slight bronzing look to it. But don't, whatever you do, get them on your pads. On the actual abrasive surface, which is that surface. Right then. So the best way to put bricks together is to uh, hook your springs on first. when you can't touch the outside. <laughs> so because they're separate, you can angle them whichever way you want. Um, to get them on. And now you've got them on, pull the backs of them like so. Then what you want to do position your brake and kind of crab them on like so. Get your rubber tapping on hammer out. So now we've got the first bit on. We want to lever this second section on. So we can tap that down. And then this last bit you've got to pull it past where it doesn't want to go. <laughs> so get on the inside. Oh. It's always easier in your mind than it is in reality. Like so. so you just pull them apart and pull them over. Now, when we uh, stick our lever on, Fit. Come on, you sod. Jesus Christ. There we go. Now you can see how the whole thing works. This cam turns and forces the brakes out. And obviously, the inside of the wheel is here, so when you increase this diameter, it presses on the inside of the wheel. So, next thing we want to do is fit new sprocket. So there's our spacer that goes in there like so. We can't lose that, we'll put that there. We've got our wheel on a piece of cardboard so we don't mar up the surface on the other side. We stick the dogs inside the cush drive and what we want to do is we want to undo all these bolts and uh, replace our sprocket. So uh, you can see that there's a layer of shit. Uh, the chain has removed this layer of shit. <laughs> as a clearance. Um, yeah, this bike was ridden winter until it died or whatever happened to it. But uh, we'll do this sprocket, we'll then move on to the front sprocket and then uh, do the axle and uh, start doing the brake and uh, the rear drum. We'll sort that out and then we'll uh, do the chain. So you can do this two ways. You can do these while still on the bike. Which right now seems like a good idea. These are torqued to oh, 59 newton meters. My god, I can feel it. So we get our tapping stick just as aid as.
so to get a better angle on that one. That one's moving. Good. This one that was a sod to a better angle. I always use rubber hammers as much as possible so I don't damage things, but also if I miss, I don't break my hip. I've never been a wheelchair. So these are all like everything else on this bike, frozen. We're not frozen to the point where it's going to uh, snap a bolt, I hope. Oh, what fun it is. Sat down in your living room, your bedroom or at work, watching me undo my nuts. I do miss this though. Backyard biking's quite cool. Something romantic about me. Right. Oh, you can see what it is underneath. Old rocket. be gone. All I'm going to do is clean out all the shite, make sure the new sprocket's got something to sit on. <laughs> 